want my real bike. This thing's a piece of poo. Let's check this out real quick. in town now? Looks like. Ah, uh, you little jerk. I feel embarrassing, embarrassingly vindicated as I hand Simon the Beatles, but rather than gloat, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving. You're leaving and you'll never come back. Comfort her. She blows her nose and wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You are her friend. I miss her too. There's been a letter here and there, but it was always to us rather than to me. I'm not bitter, but I hope not to be like that. Please don't go. I tell Simon not to worry, that I'll be back sooner than she knows. I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And add that if I am not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready for her gliding by then, and she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I suppose I can come see you off. I thank her and say goodbye for now. Alright. Can I see what's in your little cave here? Maybe steal your money? Hey. Ibexi red dye. Dye bottle for the colors of the Ibexi red bike. Oh, cool. Alright, Cizo. People don't go to sleep. Did I totally miss this? I did. I return to Caesar with the parts, and it's as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? I'm ready. And let us head to the workshop. Cizo relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily. But there's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Cizo is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the components you acquire, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod and feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those equ unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Assemble the machine. Throw. <laughs> Gliding bike booster. 
Okay. Gliding bike front. Gliding bike wings. Cizo. Listen. Cizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to Simoon. All at once, I know the hoverbike's name, Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Cizo, Cizo know. Simoon. Simoon. Well done, Sable. What does it mean? What does it mean? You should ask her yourself. Cizo looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing, even when I lean close. I tell Simoon that I'm eager to know her better, and Cizo looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready then, for the, gli for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Cizo is prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simoon, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more badges. I thank Cizo twice for good measure, and give a bow. I am ready. All right. Chari. Return to Jotty with a new lightness, and it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Cizo gave it to me. I tell Jotty that Cizo gave me the badge. Then you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the mask caster in no time. I try to think about going to a mask caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever? I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll get plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. But don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. <laughs> How will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out. But when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all this done, there's only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rahana. There, you'll assemble your gliding mask and go. There are things I wish to convey to Jadi here, depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. And though I find myself unable to speak any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made you these. They are dyed with the traditional Abexi maroon and I hope I hope provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Ibexi. You will simply be Sable, 
and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I will always know you, I will always love you, and I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. And I am ready. I should head to the temple to begin my gliding. Um, let's see. Close here. So, Ibexi glider top. Clothing made for Ibexi children as they go out on their gliding. Cloak is unmistakably Ibexi red. It doesn't tell me if the, there's any like stats or anything. Jotty made Ibexi glider trousers. Jotty made these. The patterning is unique to the Ibexi. The fabric seems to have been made at the Burnt Oak Station. Sweet, I got a cape. All right, let's glide. I'm not taking that piece of crap. Yeah, doors open. Is that not where I go? Waypoint's pointing me away. Well, okay. Uh, it's a bigger temple than it looked like. <laughs> Buttons. Buttons. I push the button. Okay. Uh, let's try this one first. that can I make that no I can't it's that weird butterfly guy Okay. Hmm. 
Ooh, I can climb. Ooh, you can climb sideways. <laughs> I do like that bubble uh, glide. It's an archer here. One more. this? Oh, some rando. Prying open my third eye. mask. You guys are creepy. Do I talk to it? What? A Bexy mask. Turn to camp. I want to wear the mask. The mask worn by those in the sand sea made of bone. The ones particularly to the Ibexi are made from the skull of a mountain goat. Shit, yeah, I'm wearing that. Some sick horns now. I thought I was exiting. I guess it makes sense because I don't have my glider yet. like full frames but the animation's not it's weird Logging in. Hello, Sable. Jotty's voice echoes strangely through the machine, yet it still warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There's a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I am grateful. It would be far too much to hear the cracks in her voice and not run weepily into her arms to stay forever. But I am ready, and so I close my eyes and listen. 
But though you go by yourself, you are not without friends. You are not without family. You are not without love. These things you will always carry with you as you do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go see Utari. They're the machinist at Burnt Oak Station and among Sizo's closest friends. Utari is a good contact to have on one's gliding and a fine way to get another machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only a suggestion though. As for us, I'll send another message once we've returned to the Ewer. So keep an eye on the post boxes and try not to forget us. She takes a long breath and I forget that things as easy as breathing could ever exist. The world is waiting, Sable. Good luck. Where's my freaking glider? No, I didn't realize those were like dudes high fiving. There you are. <laughs> ah, smoother. Wait, did I check this out? I forgot her name already. Gotta be something here, right? One of those weird wormy things? Bunny worm? Freaking me out, man. Um, let's take this off. Cool. Let's go. Eh, not, not too long of a little intro. More characters than I expected. I thought there was a boost. Oh, no. no? A boost? I'll just head towards this dude. See what I see on the way. Bones. Some glowing red on the horizon. Ah! 
I see a balloon. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking back to um, Mad Max, how you uncover bits of the map by using those little balloons. Which I was... I love that game, but... Uh, I guess it makes sense that the cartographers would have balloons, right? Because they're mapping out these areas from the air. I like the music. It's very chill travel music. How are you supposed to get up here if you don't have a gliding ability? I'm not going to make this, am I? Dude, I greet the cartographer shyly, a little cowed by how alone we are up here and how intimate that sometimes feels. Despite being so much about of my gliding, she responds with what sounds like a warm smile. Hello there, glider. Thanks for taking the time to climb all the way up here. Surveying gets a little lonely sometimes, you know? I tell her I do, given how lonely I can get on the sand sometimes. I hope Simoon doesn't hear. So then, what is it you need? Can I buy a map? Here's what I have. Ooh, badge. Map of the Sand Sea. We have Bexy spend most of our time in these scorching sands. Certain landmarks are familiar, but this map of the Sand Sea will help for the vast lands between. Made and sold by members of the, the Cartography Guild. Okay, let's get that. May as well get this badge since I'm here. Thanks, Glider. Goodbye. Alright, so... Oh, I was going to ask her. It's worth a look nearby. She chuckles to herself. Of course. You don't think I'm standing up here for nothing, do you? Have you been to the Great Wind Tower yet? Get up there and you can see for ages. And Bur Burnt Oak Station is close by as well. You're never, you'll never guess why it's called that. I think about it, but she goes on before I can shout my prediction. And if you're a fan of insects, there's a gigantic Hercules beetle nest nearby. You know, rumor has it they can lift 100 times their own body weight. Alright, so... Um... It's obviously something... Move your balloon. And let's suppose any what she told me was marked. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is a big area. Okay. Oh, that must be uh, where the dude is. Something here. Hmm. 
So who knows what that Herculean beetle is. Okay. Where's Sat 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 Samil Sat Sadi Sat I don't remember. Sassoon. Vidal Sassoon. There we are. Alright, let's hit up this first since it's our dude. So it's northwest. Oh, it's it's marked. Bye. The burnt burnt oak station is where we're going. Where's the entrance? The machinist. It is a challenge not to view scrappers through quite a romantic lens. As I look toward my gliding as a child, I pictured myself as a dust covered traveler, exploring strange forbidden places and finding strange forgotten things. A treasure hunter of, of old and arcane objects. And though I'm certain the grind of sifting through sand and dirt for useful tools and things left over can wear anyone down. I cannot help but weave some thread of my fantasy into the reality of the world. Greetings, Glider. My name's Alton. I give a bow and introduce myself as Sable. You'll find much scrap metal out there, Sable. Yeah, you find much scrap metal out there, Sable? It's been known to happen. Good, good. Alton leans back and looks up at the ceiling thoughtfully. Got a task for you then, if you're up for it. The hesitation in my voice is a product of a gentle intimidation, but I stand up straight and casual enough to seem like I'm up for anything. Alton seems to believe it enough. I need scrap, Sable, and lots of it. And you are out there already, doing basically nothing. Alton chuckles to himself. Shouldn't say it like that. Gliding's odd, eh? You have nothing to do, so you have everything to do. Wonder if anyone's ever spent their gliding just lying around. I don't know if that counts as gliding. I say with a smirk that I don't imagine that would count as a gliding. But at the same time, I wonder if some people do go out and use the time to simply be with themselves in a safe and reflective space. Would it matter as much what mask we chose if we found our purpose deep within? Oh no, should I be doing that? Alton clears his throat, and I'm grateful to be shaken free. Anyhow, the task. Let's see if you can understand this one, yeah? It's a bit complex. I tell him I'm ready. Go out. Find scrap. Bring it to me. What sort of scrap? All of it. Big scrap, little scrap, medium-sized scrap. If it's made of metal and it's too busted up for anything else, I want it. Think you can handle that? I tell him I'm happy for any reason to explore, and that I'll return with everything I find. I say goodbye to Alton. Cool. I haven't seen any yet, I don't think. Okay, there's probably a better way up here. 
Can I part? Oh. Saboon. South Saloon. Oh, hey, a parking spot. Da, 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 da. The machinist looks me over. You're late. I've never met you in my life. You would have met me sooner, were it not for your delay. But I forgive you. Any friend of Cizo's is instantly beloved, and I take no offense. Perplexed, I wait for them to explain themselves, but they seem to wait for the same. Briefly, I feel a hint of shame as I remember times I have been late among the Ibexi, things I have slipped up doing. But I dismiss my doubts as I recall that I have no idea who this strange machinist is. I ask them. My name is Utari. Of immediate relevance to you is that I am a friend of Cizo. I ask, then, if Cizo alerted them to my impending arrival. Perhaps she looks out for me and sets waypoints and oases along my gliding. A comforting thought. No, no, no. It was your hoverbike. I heard it for the first time months ago and felt the shape of its voice. Of her voice. Sorry. I tell Utari that it was not Simoon they heard. For Cizo and I only built her a few days hence. They waved their hands at me in a hurried dismissal. Did Cizo teach you so little? The voices of our machines are eternal, more ancient even than their forms. I hear them, as I always have, and yours I thought would revisit me sooner. But here we are. Now let us speak of why you have come. Our needs converge atop the wind tower. Tell me more. Something has stopped the tower working. I was hours away from going to see it for myself, but you and Simoon came after all. Go there, mend what is broken, or soothe what is hurt, and I will give you what you seek. I ask Utari if they know what I seek. I omit that I might not. A direction. I will be waiting for you. Travel swiftly and safely. I say goodbye to Utari. Utari. Stubborn snag. You're a little jerk. Apparently something has stopped the turbine. So I should be able to fix the tower by removing it. The mask caster sits, unmoving, silent. Can't tell if the mask caster is human or something else. I've heard about mask casters and stories about glidings before. Gliders should collect three badges of a set and bring them to the caster, for whom the mask cast for whom the mask shall be cast. I should look for some more badges. I leave the mask caster. Okay. What the F is that? Dusk Firefly. Okay. We'd had like a talking thing icon. Who are you? Got some armor on you, dude. The guard before me stands tall, her posture shaped by duty, uniform weathered by years. Hello there, young glider. I'm nearly startled by the force of her greeting. Her voice is comforting, somehow. Warm and welcoming. I greet her with the accidental enthusiasm of a traveler finding a friend. She smiles behind the mask, I think. Always nice to meet a fellow adventurer, especially now. How are you faring so far? The world is big and I feel very small. You say that like it's a bad thing. Isn't it a wonder, the size of it all, that you can spend your whole life wandering and still find more to see? I think about the balled up fabric and smoothed out rock that will make my next pillow, and many to come. My neck aches faintly at the thought of how many nights I'll spend this way. 
It's possible I'm romanticizing it a little. You see, I'm getting ready to leave on my second gliding. She reads the confusion in my silence. Did no one tell me of the second gliding? I suppose it isn't a real second gliding, but it's how I'm thinking about it. A chance to see the world again, and how it's changed. I'm an Ekrin guard, you see, or I was an Ekrin guard. As of three days ago, I'm officially retired. You should have seen the way the others looked at me. There's a laugh in her voice. All of them were so baffled to see me go, telling me how much I'd missed the big city. A few of them even felt sorry for me. Like, what would I do now that my life's purpose is complete? Can you imagine? I try to, but I can barely muster a view of my purpose's start, let alone its end. I shake my head. I said, thank you for all the strange condolences, but tomorrow marks the first time in decades that I'll wake up in the morning and have absolutely no idea what lies ahead. And I've never been more excited. Don't get me wrong. I've loved my work. I've even loved the noise and trouble of Ecria, but I've spent enough of my life standing around looking hard. It's time to explore. Her glee is infectious. I ask where she'd like to go. I'm headed I'm heading to the Badlands, I think. I want to see the Bridge of the Betrayed. If you haven't already, you should definitely go and see it yourself. You'll want the northern Badlands, southwest of here. I nod, trying to keep the directions in mind. And Elizabeth gives me a little tap. Maybe I'll see you up there. Cool. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> nice mask. I meet Aoife, the innkeeper of the camp. What can I do for you? Do you have any tasks that need doing? Before I can even finish the question, Aoife shouts, Larval husks. I repeat the words back to her as a clarification. She nods. I need some larval husks. There, how much do you know about beetles? A little bit. Well, not sure if this is part of that little bit, but larval husks are what get left behind when the beetle larvae grow. Beautiful, really tough casings. If you don't mind, I'd be grateful if you could collect some for me. Her face is like doing weird stuff and it's freaky. The type I'm looking for are Hercules. <laughs> Stop it. Hercules beetles. You don't need to go far, but the nest is guarded by the mother beetle. You're going to have to find a way to get past her. I tell her I'll do my best. Anything else I can help you with? Farewell, glider. Okay. What's that nest? That nest. Uh, the person was talking. What the hell? You're riding one of these things? Nomadic merchant, Bobby. Glider, welcome. Come view my wares. Tell me about this camp. This is one of many beetle tent stations around Midden. Named after that big old burnt tree over there. Not sure what species an oak is, mind. There's plenty of characters passing through here. They're all worth the bother if you're on your gliding. Never know what badges and masks you might pick up. Don't be shy. Chat to the tent owners, interrogate the machinists, and any other people you see around. There's also the scrapper's yard just below the big crane over there. There's a lazy scrapper down there who'll make finding scraps worth your time. See you soon. Let's see what you have. Smashing of a gander at my goods. Uh, beetle bike booster. Smoke pours out of the many exhausts at the back of this booster. Best to avoid use indoors or near other people. Beetle bike front, beetle bike wings. Okay, booster is just the engine. Um, frantic energy runs through the mandible-like features of this bike, never stopping and constantly in motion as if it is looking for something. Wings. The part often utilized by beetle enthusiasts, the mandible-like wings flare out with, inten with intense tension when riders strafe and curl up tight for tight aerodynamic gliding when driving at high speeds. Hmm. Let's try the wings. 
want to see what it does. Or if it's if it moves any different. What's up, Buckethead? Chef Shepherd Leah. Well met, Glider. We had goats in my clan. Ah, so you're familiar with their temperament. I suppose you're Ibe. Say hello to Umar and Jadi for me. Well met, Glider. What's in that glass vial? Oh, I made this. It's a color palette for a hover bike, inspired by my work as a herder. Here, take some. I insist. I'd be proud to see you riding a bike with my colors, Sable. What's up with the statue? Ah, you may recognize her. Oana. She was a great herder of many creatures. They say she came from the whale and herded the first of the creatures' ancestors we heard today. We teach that keeping your herd near her statues will keep them together, well-fed, and healthy. Okay. Hi. Give me your money. Narrow stock fig. Undoubtedly my favorite fruit. First thing I would ask for when we pass traveling merchants with the Ibexi. Oh, there was, um... Nope. There's something else. Oh, merchant's badges. Merchants aren't liable for... Aren't liable to just give out badges freely. Your best bet is to head to Ekria. There's a big market in town there. Worth trying to area's attention if you want to get yourself some merchant's badges. Be careful how you do it, mine. She's not the friendliest customer. See you soon. Okay. Um, I'm jumping over you. I think there was a... Uh, I can, like, customize my bike. Uh, no luck with the tower. I'm sure you'll sort it soon enough. The task is made for you. Customize bike. Oh, it does have different stats. Okay, so this is max speed goes down, but handling goes up. Hmm. Even just happen. Under the hood. How do I do it? It's like, oh, see, it's glitched out. There's the colors. stuff here. So these are supposed to, supposed to be close by. Just find scrap. Bridge of the Betrayed. This is probably in another area. Uh, fix the tower. Let's see where this is. This way. This is. Is it anywhere? Hmm. Maybe I don't, because I don't have the map. <clears throat> uh, 
Where's this? It's down here. Okay. Um, let's check this out actually real quick. Since we're right next to it. It's uh, here. Well, right next to it. These wings are weird. It said they like, oh yeah, okay, so they like jut out when you're strafing. I'm wondering if I should visit these places if I don't really know what's up with them yet. Or if I wait, should wait until I get a quest for them. But let's just, let's just explore and see. Hello. Chum. Looks like we got an entrance. Can you make that? pretty obvious and I missed it. Ooh. The Dunboyne. The name of the ship. So there's a power cell there and an outlet there. sure I can still get, oops, get back up. No, oh, maybe I didn't even need to do that. Oh man, it's big. Hello. Is this the, no. Oh, it is. Kind of the exit. Can I? Can't jump with it. Can I throw it up? No. Okay. Um. Cool. I like these little discrete puzzle areas. Looks significant. Oh, scrap. Oh, worm. Bunny worm. Uh, no, 
looks like it can rotate. There's power to receptacle. What does this one do? It's a door. Oops. I was trying to run, but that's the throw button. time. Scrap. What's this? Ah, there we go. Damn it. <laughs> Where did I throw it? Something above. I do like these horns. What the? Cortana? Cortano. I encounter a strange, luminous figure. It greets me before I even have a chance to be frightened. No user found. Hello, please enter your username. Saren. <laughs> I find myself whispering, whispering my own name. It suddenly feels odd in my mouth, like this is the first time I've said it aloud. Welcome, Sable. I've set up a new account for you. I ask the mysterious figure about themselves. I am this ship's simulated anthropomorphic registry and information informational nexus, but you can call me Saren. I ask Saren what they're doing here. I'm not entirely sure, Sable. Most of my data modules appear to be corrupted. I'm attempting access ship records. Saren goes still for a moment. Transferring ship's log to your inbox. You have unread messages, Sable. Okay. Here are your unread messages. Recording zero one. The panel blinks to life. Strange markings and symbols I assume to be ancient text spill across the screen as the background colors flash wildly. And then, with a strange buzzing like old fabrics pulling apart, there are voices. Within long range sensors, Captain, we're picking up some anomalous readings from the upper atmosphere. Could be a plasma storm, but the radiation signature doesn't quite match. Hmm. Maintain approach at current speed. What's our time to destination? 46 Earth hours, give or take. Good. Let, let's keep an eye on these energy signatures and get Sarah in, in on it too for pattern recognition. Captain, we need to purge our reactor soon. If we don't... I know. I'm, I'm aware of the risks, Ellis, but I'm not purging in the middle of space. We follow the protocol and the recording fails and the static continues. A few button pushes bring silence and a screen that looks navigable in some way, but I can't decipher anything. No unread messages. Is this... Okay. Goodbye. Let's say farewell to Saren. Interesting. So... We are apparently human, there is apparently an Earth, and these are apparently spaceships. It's quite a bit. It's 
quite a bit. Quite a bit of info just, uh, just given to me here. Okay, I don't suppose I can get on that catwalk up there. Climb this pole. No. <laughs> okay. Cool. That's neat. There's a uh, quite a bit of story and uh, setting happening. I didn't expect it to explain much, honestly. And I don't know, I, I kind of like it when they leave it ambiguous, but it's interesting that they have this story. I'm curious to see. What the heck is this? Can I climb it? Maybe. So I can, I can increase the stats on my bike, but I don't know if I can increase the stats on my person. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. Oh, crap. All right, I'm gonna try, oh, hey, a ring. I'm gonna try one more time. She didn't jump very high. So close. No, that's not gonna do it. Oh, okay. Stick a fork in it here. Myself. This is here. Let's go through that ring. I don't know what that does, but. Oh, hey, there's more than one. Ooh, it looks like maybe I can. Uh... Jump on top of this thing. I got one of these. No, no, that's way too far. Atomic disposal. It's got a, it's stripey like a, Homeworld ish. Uh, what is this the rings went back went back to dark. Do I have to like do them all in a order or something? Let's see. There's a fourth one. Hey. What? Huh. 
I did not expect that to actually do anything. That's cool. What is this? Ugh. It's dark in here. Okay. An ancient race. I activated an old monument by driving through some strange rings. Inside the monument, I found a ring-shaped artifact. I wonder what the ring-shaped artifact is for. Flying stone, compass, navigator. Okay, so we've got maps here. Uh, ring artifact. Scrap metal. I can feel a light tug towards an unknown place when I hold it lightly in my hands. Like a key that belongs somewhere. Interesting. Uh, let's go see what let's go see what, what we get for the scrap. Real quick. This game has way too many like one more thing things. Let's do one more thing. Got crappy out. Is there a chest in this tube? No. Woo. I want some I want some speed. I have the need for speed. Well, what is that? It's like a big glowy. Hmm. I can't. It's probably this. All right, dude. What are you gonna give me? Just money, I'm assuming, or a badge at some point. Alton barely looks up at me. Find anything useful? Sell scrap metal. Okay. So yeah, just money. 